Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, I'm Chucky2009 and I make welding videos. So, it's currently mid to late September and it's about that time of year when everybody goes back to school and those people that have just started taking welding classes through high school or like a tech center like what I went to are just starting to get to the point where you learn how to start an arc when you're stick welding and it's not as easy as it looks and sounds the first few times you do it. Uh, but to be fair, starting an arc is not hard, it is not complicated and it is not rocket surgery, but again, it can be really hard and really complicated and straight up rocket surgery the first few times you do it. But realistically, it's no different than when you were a little kid and you first learned to write your name or brush your teeth or any of that good stuff. It was really hard and then once you've done it a few times, it's like a muscle memory and you could do it with your eyes closed. So let me show you what I got set up here. I've got a scrap piece of 3 8 plate we'll be demonstrating on. I've got an eighth inch 7014 electrode. Uh, why did I choose this to make the video with? Just because if you're starting off at 99.9% .9 of uh, high schools or whatever when you first start stick welding, you'll probably be running 6013 or 7014. So, what a lot of people do starting off is something that I refer to as the blindly stabbing method. And that's because they put their helmet down, then they just kind of stick the electrode on the plate and pull it back up and hope that it will uh, start. You know, hope it'll strike an arc, which it eventually will if you keep doing that enough times, but it's a little bit on the barbaric side, to be honest. Um, you're very likely to have arc strikes all over your thing, because it kind of, your electrode sticks, and you break it loose, and you have a nice long arc mark, and nobody likes that. So, in my opinion, what the better thing to do is, and this is how I always start on my stick welding arcs, is sort of like, sort of like a match striking method. We'll do this real high dollar, slow-mo camera action here. You just start up here. You come down to the plate, drag it along the plate, pull it back up, and in theory, you, when you contact the plate, it uh, sort of crackles a little bit, and, we, and then when you pull back, you've got an arc going, then you just get into position and start welding away. It might take a couple of times, probably take more than a couple of times if you've never done it before, you've only done it a couple of times. And the other thing that's good about this method is it will, in theory, reduce the chances of you sticking your rod to the metal because you know when you're coming down if it sticks you already have some forward momentum breaking so you're likely to just break it loose and keep on moving but if you don't generally just a nice side to side twisting motion it's uh, sort of a panic reaction at first but then it's not much of a big deal in my electrode so basically what I'm gonna do is come over here to the precision TIG and I already got it set up for at 110 amps DC electrode positive and so I'm just going to come back over here, set this camera up, and I will give you all a nice little demonstration here. I'm just going to sort of coil this lead around my arm. It'll take the weight off the stinger, help you to be a little bit more stable. Another tip might help you. And so now I'm just going to come over here, flip down my auto darkening helmet. I'm going to move down towards the metal and sort of pull back up. And then as soon as I have an arc established, uh, for demonstration's sake, I'll just break the arc and do it again. So here we go. When you get to starting an arc on T-joints, if you start here, well, it'll probably work, but there's a much higher chance of you entrapping some slag, and uh, you know, you won't have the tip of the electrode warmed up at all, so what's better is if you start off to the side a little bit, like if I was going to weld this, I'd just start over here on my bench. I'd start my arc, I'd establish it, carry it over, set it down, start welding. So yeah, that'll hopefully save you guys from having some wormholes at the beginnings of your welds. Uh, a little bit a little bit advanced for this video, but I'll toss it in here anyway, because what the heck. So anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. It's been kind of fun to make. It makes me think of the good old days. Just over two years ago, actually, when I started high school. So if you are taking welding classes, I wish you the best. You've made a really good decision. And as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for more up against the metal here, just like you're trying to start a match. I don't know, because when you start a match, you go like that. And that's not really something you want to do here. You'd be like six inches off from your joint or something. So just a couple little strikes like that, and it'll, you'll want to go down like this, brush up against the metal, and come back off. And hopefully, as soon as you hit the metal and start to come off, the arc will start. Then you'll long arc it for a second, then go back down and start your weld. 
In theory, that's how that works. And then there's the blindly stabbing method, which is what I started off doing, what I still do sometimes when I'm not thinking about it. And that's when you just go, you know, you just kind of tap it against the metal and you try and get it to work. I guess that first one was kind of like the match method. But no, the blindly stabbing method is just when you go like that and hope that it strikes. And it usually will, but the match is a little bit smoother and it's just, I don't know, it's just my preference. Do whatever works for you. And what works for one person like me might not work for another person like you. So again, we've got the match method and the blindly stabbing method. So yeah, basically, here we go. And uh, make sure it's snug, make sure it's not gonna come like flying out of there or move to a different angle. Now something you wanna be aware of, this is not like MIG where if you don't pull the trigger, it's not hot. This is hot like no matter what here. So basically if you're not paying attention, and you just set your electrode down, you know, it. It'll, it's on, it's live. So basically, let's just try this little match start method here. I'll do it a couple times without trying to uh, maintain the arc just so you guys can see it. Just like that. Move it down, run it across the metal and pull up. Now when you pull up, hopefully it'll be going like that last one was. So... This is way too cold. I have to turn the welder up. I don't run much. 6013. But anyway, there you go. You saw it. So now I'll try the blindly stabbing method here. Just like that. You just. Pretty much all there is to it. And actually, let me come over here and give this welder a few cranks up here. Actually, just a crank and a third feels about right. So, I'm going to use the blindly stabbing method to start an arc after I clean this flux off of here, or the slag. When it's on the electrode, it's flux. When it's on the piece of metal, it's slag. And you don't want to weld over there, you want to get it all off of there. So, yeah, blindly stabbing method, here we go.